Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, we're going to do a prospect check-in. So we're going to dive into or get a nice little peek into how the prospects are doing, um, kind of where they're at right now, how they're starting their seasons. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin in San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Sharks your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. Of course, you can watch this on YouTube. And today is a great YouTube day. I made uh, some nice little, you know, uh, graphics for each char- for each character for each uh, player. So kind of dive into each player, see how they've started their season. So uh, a couple things though. Not going to cover any of the Barracuda guys because we talk pretty extensively about the Barracuda. I'm going to make it a point to cover the Barracuda basically as as the season goes. So um, maybe we'll we'll kind of do quarter like kind of bigger check ins with just the Barracuda. So wanted to really get into the prospects and then a couple guys who just really haven't played this year, so they got omitted. Um, you know, Gan Rock is coming back from an injury, so he hasn't played a game yet this year. Um, and then also uh, Matias Havlet, I think he's played like one or two games. So didn't think it was fair to kind of he, – he's played two games for Havlet. He's played two games. So um, right now I don't know if he's dealing with an injury and stuff. So didn't want to kind of include those guys who've been uh, playing. And then Ozzy Wisewad as well, so um, who hasn't played – actually has not played a game yet this year. So – He's kind of a stuck between the Barracuda East and then the uh, Wichita Thunder. But those guys haven't played, so I didn't want to include them. So way to do this, um, we'll actually start with the 2022 draft, 2021 draft. Uh, we'll get into some of the other guys, kind of like the college guys and some of the other guys. And then we'll end with the Wichita Thunder guys and seeing how they've started their season. So uh, without further ado, let's get this bad boy going. And I think we have to start with one, Philip Bystead, the 2022 first uh, round pick uh, for the Sharks this season, playing in Linko Ping. Um, pretty solid start for him. He's played 18 games, has three goals, uh, six assists, and 31 shots. He's up there when it comes to the rookies in the SHL this year. You know, one of, one of the top rookies in the SHL when it comes to scoring. Um, so, he definitely much stronger start than he's kind of tailed off the last few games, but he has been consistently a third, their third line center for Linko Ping. Um, they've been kind of middle of the pack when it comes to the actual SHL, middle of the pack into the lower third. Um, but he has been providing offense, especially on the power play. That's kind of where he's been producing the most. And it's good to see that they're giving him opportunities to play on the power play and try to try to contribute there. So um, pretty solid start for him. I, I think, you know, especially with, we know that he's going to be a project and it's going to be a couple of years before he makes it, uh, makes a jump to hockey in the, the U S but solid start. would love to see him kind of continue to, to get some more points here. Um, most of his goals, like I said, all of his goals, I think are our power play goals. And then most of them kind of came in the in the beginning, first few games of the year, and has definitely tailed off a little bit. So hopefully, he can kind of find that next gear right now. So um, next would be one Cam Lund. Uh, Lund, of course, uh, 2022 second playing with Northeastern. He's actually the only of one of the uh, this year's draft class. Many of them will play college, but he's the only one who actually made the jump to college right now um northeastern really good team i think they're like in the top 15 right now ranked um and he's actually been playing he was playing a lot of first line minutes with them i think he's now has been kind of bumped down to second or third line minutes but nine games played um does have a goal and five assists with 39 shots on goal so he is shooting which is what you love to see um i think you're going to see him 
those gold numbers will start to tick up a little bit here if he continues to shoot. Um, and, you know, Lund's not going to shoot at the, like, 2% or whatever he's shooting right now. It's, it's not for him, for a guy who is a goal scorer, um, we're going to start to see some more of those goals coming for him. So good to see, though, the, the assist numbers. Um, I think watching a few of his Northeastern games, his transition uh, skills really impressed me. And then I think his passing has been kind of an underrated uh, when we were kind of studying him coming out of, or, you know, after the draft. So good to see that he is kind of fitting in, especially on a really, really good team and producing. I think we'll see those gold numbers continue to kind of go up as the season goes along. So um, next Mason Bopit uh, goalie for the uh, 2022 fourth round pick for uh, Spokane Chiefs in the WHL and uh, poor Bo Pitt is it's tough with him where Spokane has been a bad, bad team and he is getting uh, shelled. So the numbers do not look good right now. He's played nine games, um, 833 save percentage, 558 goals against 215 saves. So he has seen the rubber a ton, a ton of ton of shots. And Spokane is just a bad, bad team. And it's it's tough where these goalies, it's hard to try to just, you know, how much of it is them and how much of it is the team in front of them. And it looks like right now, Bopet is not being put in a good position to try to succeed, especially with the team in front of him where they're getting shelled constantly. And it's doesn't matter if he's in goal or if it's backup is in goal and they're giving up seven, eight goals a night just because of the team in front of him. So, um, Pray for Bo Pet. He is taking it on the chin this year when it comes to the numbers. So he's just getting ready to play in San Jose, right? That's that's the joke. Anyway, so poor Mason Bo Pitt. Uh Jake Furlong, 2022 fifth round pick in the uh, playing for Halifax in the K or the QMJHL. Uh, he has in 15 games, he's got two goals, eight assists, 30 shots on goal. Love to see that for the defenseman getting involved there. Um He's going to be known for his offense, and he's been producing that. Uh, Halifax team is an absolute unit right now. I think they've lost like one or two games so far this season. They are just absolutely dominating uh, what what whoever they play. Um, I know they have a their a prospect who's a Blue Jay or Blue Jackets prospect who's got like two goals a game or something. Like, that's just absolutely dominating. So, um, yep, he's been playing kind of first line defensive minutes. For Halifax, he's been getting a lot of opportunities for them. So um, numbers might be a little bit down compared to what you would think, especially for the way Halifax scores. But he's off to a pretty solid start this year. Uh, Joey Maldoni, next uh, 2022 fifth round pick playing uh, with Des Moines Buccaneers in the USHL. 12 games, four goals, three assists, 22 shots on goal. He's actually the leader on his team when it comes to points. He's tied for the lead. Um, good to good to see him kind of finding his groove there, especially in the USHL. He'll be playing in college next year, um, but it, it's good to see that he is kind of, you know, kind of figuring it out and, and is get, able to get his um, his scoring. He's been kind of playing up and down the lineup there, I think mostly, but now he's starting to kind of play more of those top six minutes. So uh, good for Maldoni. Keep scoring, dude. <laughs> And then uh, Eli Barnett, 2022 seventh round pick with the Victoria Cleese, the captain of their team in the BCHL. 16 games, um, two goals and assist. He's not really known for his offense. When I uh, you know, interviewed him this summer, that he said that was one thing he really, really wanted to work on, was trying to get that offense going. I know the numbers don't sound good, but last year he only had three goals. So he's got two goals in 16 games this year. So hopefully he can continue to, to try to find some of that offense there, but he is going to be a defensive defenseman, especially with uh, his size and stuff. So, um, but good, good days named captain. Good. They starting to find a little bit of offense, especially compared to last year, but um, Barnett is not going to be an offensive force um, it, as he continues his career. So, and then hometown kid Reese Labac, uh, the 2022 seventh round pick playing with the uh, Youngstown Phantoms in the USHL. 
10 games, does have a goal and an assist, eight shots on goal. He's been kind of up and down the lineup, mostly on that, that fourth line for Youngstown uh, with them. So for him, it's it's continuing to try to kind of work his way up, hopefully, and get more opportunities. But, you know, he's only one, one goal and eight shots. It's not too, too bad there. So uh, hopefully he'll continue to kind of, as the season goes along, earn more opportunity for more playing time uh, with Youngstown. All right, before, though, we continue, uh, let's take a quick break. Talk to you guys at our friends over at Bet Online. You guys know Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You have the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer to esports. They've got you covered at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can also find those on Bet Online. More betting than what we cover here at Locked On, but they've got you there. Uh, we're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fixed. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. And when you're finished uh, with this podcast, you definitely want to go check out the game to game. So thanks for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Now, for your second listen, go check out the Locked On Game to Game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Great way to find out, get caught up on everything that happened in the NHL the night before. So follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL. They will on Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. All right, so let's dive back into uh, the children here. So next, the 21-21 draft. Uh, of course, William Eklund playing on the Barracuda. Sorry. We we talk about the Barracuda and Eklund all the time. Benjamin Gaudreau, the Goat Row, 2021 third-round pick, playing with Sarnia in the OHL. He's already played 14 games this year, 871 save percentage, 348 goals against, 290 saves this year. Um Sarnia has been kind of middle of the pack uh, type of team. So, you know, Gaudreau definitely has some good games. He's definitely has some games that I'm sure he would like to shake off as well. So um, hopefully he can start stacking more and more of these good games and maybe try to get some of those numbers up. But again, he has faced 290 shots in 14 games. So he's definitely got his work cut out for him most nights. And we saw that last year with Sarnia where he was getting shelled and, and was kind of, asked to do a lot so he's their number one goaltender he's been facing playing the most most games even on back-to-backs like he is he's their workhorse for for sonia right now and so yes keep doing that love to see hopefully those numbers will start to kind of creep up a little bit here but again it's hard with with the ohl and with some of these where these kind of younger developmental leagues where you don't know what's happening in front of them night in night out and you know, Goudreau, sometimes you have a 16-year-old kid on defense who makes a mistake and then you're having to pay for it type of thing. So, but uh, next, Ethan Cardwell, 2021. Fourth round pick playing with the Barry Colts. He's one of the kind of last guys to go back uh, was, was on the kind of Sharks Barracuda roster. So literally kind of the last minute before they sent him back. Um, and, you know, there was a case for him to be play for the Barracuda, but we've seen with the Sharks where they like to let these guys marinate and play that over Asia season. Um, you know, we saw that with, with Co. We've seen that with a lot of these guys where go back, play, go dominate. And Cardwell is off to an amazing start. Seven games for the Colts, um, three goals, 11 assists. So he's averaging two points a game right now, 24 shots on goal. So I ex- actually expect um those goals to start to come up because we know he is a goal scorer so um i wouldn't be surprised if he is in the 40 goal range by the end of the season especially with how proficient of a scorer he is and being an overager guy like he he should be flirting with the 40 goals uh by the end of the season so off to a good start with the points um yeah Ethan Cardwell, you go dominate those little children. So next, um, Artem Gurev, 2021, a fifth round pick playing with Petersburg. 
on the OHL. He's played seven games, zero goals, one assist, one shot on goal, was suspended five games uh, for a, I think it was a check to the head. Um, he has been, uh, let's just say he's been disturbing. Uh, I won't say disturbing. He's been causing chaos. He's been kicked out of several games this year, uh, getting conducts. And that's what led to that five game. Um, so I just don't see it. I know he's big. I, I, I just don't see it with him. So I, yeah, he's going to be a, a menace type of player who, who basically just does that. And I personally, I just, I don't see it with him. So yeah. Uh, Max McHugh, 2021 fifth round pick and playing with London in the OHL, uh, 11 games, four goals, three assists, 20 shots on goal. He's been kind of playing second, third line role with, with London. Um, London is a, usually a really good team. They've been, not off to it as good of a start as you kind of expect with London. Um, but he's been producing so far to only four goals and 20 shots. You do like to see that. So, um, but I, th I think with him, he's probably going to be 30, 25, 30 goals by the end of the season. And I think you'd be pretty happy with, with Max McHugh. Then they're going to have a big decision with him next year of sending him back to London or having him with the Barracuda. So, we shall see with him. Liam Gilmartin, uh, he was actually traded from London to Erie right before the, the season started, 2021-6. Um, 15 games, five goals, five assists, 26 shots on goal. He's been playing either first or second line minutes for, for Erie this season. And he is, after a couple of games of getting himself uh, situated and kind of, you know, figuring out his, his spot, He's been kind of dynamite recently and has been producing every every game for for the Erie Otters. So yes, good start for for Gil Martin. Theo Jacobson, twenty twenty one sixth round pick, playing uh, mode with Moto Hockey with the Hockey Allsvenskan over in Sweden. Sixteen games played, zero goals, two assists, twenty one shots on goal. Um, he's been kind of stuck in this fourth line roll with him and hasn't really gotten a chance to kind of move up much and he's been you know it's it's, it's a little disappointing that he hasn't really gotten much more production with with uh moto they're i think they're top of the standings right now in the hockey house fence again so you would like to especially with teams that good you would like to be part of that production a little bit more so uh we'll see i think he's just going to be over in sweden for a while and then last of the 2021 uh, draft class, Evgeny uh, Kashnikov, seventh round pick. Um, he's playing the KHL on a team that there is no way I'm going to be able to pronounce it. I apologize. Neftekimik. Yeah, sorry. Uh, he's played 25 games over there. Uh, two goals and an assist. 32 shots on goal over there. So he his minutes kind of begin the season. He was playing like that kind of five, seven minutes a game, but he's really started to earn the the trust of the coaching staff and he's playing much more minutes, you know, 17 to 20 minutes now. So um, we'll see with him if, if he's going to be over in Russia for how long he's going to stay over in Russia. But, you know, I, I think with his, he can score the, the, he like for a defenseman, he can definitely score. He's big, he can score. So I wonder how long, um, before he makes the jump over to the U.S. and maybe playing bear hockey with the Barracuda, uh, especially with their defensive pipeline right now, you can see him maybe next year being more in the mix with that if he wants to uh, come over and play, or if he likes, he might just like playing in the KHL as well. So, um, before we get into kind of the rest of the NCAA and the Wichita guys, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Uh, I'll talk to you guys about our friends over at Simply Safe. Um, you guys know the holidays are, are coming up quickly, but with the holidays, unfortunately, comes break ins, burglaries, property crimes, and that's where you need to kind of protect your stuff. <laughs> um, so, right now, Simply Safe, they're offering a 50% off their award winning security system 
Um, that way more families can feel safe this holiday season. So when you order a Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season, great thing about them is the app. You can literally at any time, if you're at a party, you know, you're out shopping, I just want to check, see what's going on. Boom, pull up the app. They have HD security cameras for inside and outside your house. They have smarter ways to detect motion that alert you would only want to threat as real. So if like a squirrel runs in your backyard, they're not going to like go crazy and let you know. They're only going to let you know when it's actually a real threat. So don't miss out right now. This is your chance to save on a stellar security system. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year. So do not wait at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like simply safe. And when you're done with all the other Locked On podcasts, make sure you guys go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. They have the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. All right, let's get into some of the other guys. So, Kind of some of the dumb uh, NCAA guys, other guys of note, and the Wichita uh, guys. So, uh, team off Spitzerov, 2027th uh, round pick, playing with the University of Vermont in the NCAA. He's played six games. He has on a goal, zero assists, and three shots on goal. Again, with, he's still playing kind of these third, fourth line minutes with, with University of Vermont. You would have hoped by now he would have kind of taken on a little bit more especially you know he's a couple years in now so we'll see i'm not kind of really yeah um alex young 2027 playing with colgate 10 games three goals five assists 21 shots on goal so he's starting to see some of that production with him you know three goals on 21 shots not too bad one out of seven i can do the math there um i think this is a big year for him to try to kind of show that production um with on you know on colgate it's weird with ncaa especially because they don't play as many games so trying to kind of figure out like their goals and and stuff so but would like to see him continue the path that he's on i think you know having eight points in 10 games that's that's pretty solid start for him so and then Alexander shemilevsky wanted to throw him in there just so we can see how our old friend is doing uh, 2017 sixth round pick. He's playing over in the KHL on Salivant Yulav. I'm guessing 26 games, 10 goals, <laughs> nine assists, 77 shots on goal. Um, he is burning it down over there. It's great to see, especially because he could not score in in the NHL. It's good to see that he's refound his scoring touch over in the KHL. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. The Sharks have his rights for as long as, you know, basically until, you know, he comes back over. He just might enjoy playing in the KHL. Maybe he comes back next year. Uh, we shall, especially the Barracuda. You think some of the Barracuda guys, uh, you know, Bortolo, Eklund, maybe a Robin. You know, some of these guys are going to be playing on the NHL. There might be a spot for him next year. Would still have to pass through waivers, but we shall see with Shambolevsky what he does in the future. And then Magnus Krona, 2018 fifth round pick from Tampa, um, University of Denver. Oh, I screwed up there and had ECHL. My bad. Uh, NCAA. Uh, sorry about that on the graphic there. He's off to a stellar start. Nine games, 911 save percentage, 214 goals against. I think he also has a shutout, 195 saves. Um, you know, defending uh you know, defending NCAA champions here, they're gonna have their their target on their back, and he is their number one goaltender. He's gonna be facing the the best of the best competition every night as everybody wants to try to take down the you know the defending champion. So um he's off to a great start. You know, I think you know this is definitely his last year. He will be playing on the Barracuda or Wichita or whatever, but he will be in the Sharks actual system system next year. Um, and just continuing to add to this goaltender pipeline that has been 
very, very sad for a long time, but is now looking much, much better despite poor Mason Bo Pitt uh, getting shelled night in and night out. All right, Wichita guys. So Dylan Hamill, like the 2019 second round pick playing with Wichita in ECHL. Great start off for him, uh, for Hamlick. So I was pretty much kind of done with him, especially after his lack of production with the Barracuda last year. But he's really finding his stride this year with, with Wichita. Three games played, four goals and assists, five shots on goal. I don't think the uh, 80% shooting percentage is sustainable. That's just me. But good to see that he is you know, producing right now. So... If he can continue to play really well, hopefully he can get called up and go play with the Barracuda this year and maybe can continue to produce there. So, um, you know, again, I don't being this far out as a second round pick, you know, we're going to be entering year four now uh, of his, you know, draft plus four season soon. And you would like him to be more NHL ready. But it's good to see that he is producing um, in the ECHL, um, you know, given given the opportunity he has right now. Uh, Timur, you're, I always screw up on his name. Timur, 2018 six-round pick playing with Wichita. Seven games, a goal, and assist with eight shots on goal. So he's been playing more consistently down there uh, with, with, the, with Wichita. And he's produced a little bit so you would like to see a little bit more production but i I think he's just kind of going to be a echl ahl guy so next mitchell russell the sharks uh undrafted free agent that they signed this season playing wichita in the echl he's at two games uh no goals and assist uh with three shots on goal Missed out on a bunch of the first games, but he's been starting to enter the lineup uh, recently. It's weird in the ECHL. They play like three games in a row, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, of like three games in a row. So you see a lot more of the turnover of guys coming in and out of the lineup, especially because just having guys play three games in a row is seems like a lot. But uh, he's been starting to work his way into the lineup here. Um, especially after missing kind of the first week or two, um, getting, I assume getting kind of acclimated to, to playing professional hockey now. So see if Mitchell Russell, if he can start to continue to kind of build on this, the, the momentum they started in the game that now that he's actually playing. So, and then last but not least Strauss man off to a stellar start, uh, with Wichita. He's played four games, won them all 940 save percentage, 224 goals allowed, and uh 150 saves so far this year um strauss will be playing in the barracuda at some point this year he he is dominating down there in wichita and whether it's james reimer getting traded or what man has been playing awesome down there and he is yeah love to see it from strauss man so i'm glad you know, I, I think with him where he played really well at the Barracuda game, but right now, you know, they want Dell, capable veteran. You know, you can't send Dell down to the ECHL. And Ichabak Nami, who's played AHL games and has looked good so far this year. I know the last few games, the, the Kuda have not looked as good as what they first started with. But, you know, you want to see with Makanemi, especially as he's coming back from an injury what you have with him that you got with the trade. So, um, but man, Strauss man right now is, is looking great. Great to see that the way he is playing. So again, I think the sharks really found something in him and he will be playing Barracuda games here sooner rather than later, especially if he keeps playing the way that he is playing. So, all right, that's going to do it for us tonight or today or whenever you're listening to this. Um, hope you guys like the nice little prospect check-in we'll do one here probably around christmas time or so you know you usually get a nice little break around christmas time so i'll try to do another one then have a little bit more data on these guys see how their seasons are going hopefully we'll have be able to include have led and then include getting all the rock fingers crossed those guys are getting back um and then if ozzy is playing on the barracuda um so hopefully um but that's going to do it. Make sure you guys are following along Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Locked on Sharks. 
uh, be active tonight for the Barracuda game as they play the Wranglers again. So I'm going to have that. Um, and then listen, wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, you name it, wherever you can listen to a podcast, you can listen to this podcast. You can watch on YouTube. Today's a great YouTube episode. If you're listening, today's a great YouTube episode. We have, I made a, spent a lot of time making these little graphics, um, to go check those out. Um, tomorrow we're going to look at the Sharks newest signings and see how they are performing early in the season. Um, and then, you know, just kind of. Take a little look now that we're, you know, 14, 15 games in the season. See how these guys are, are, are performing now. So um, follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Be back tomorrow. And until then, bye, friends.